personal experience. Imagine an infinite void, unlimited, infinite, one. And let's just call this the one, or the one infinite. Out of this void, out of this infinite unity, there arose somehow, don't ask me how, but mysteriously there arose the desire to know itself. For how, in a void, does the one know itself? There is no contrast. There is no, nothing to discern from. There's nothing to reflect off of. There's nothing based on which to know that you're nothing. There's got to be something to know that you're absolute, that you're no thing, that you're void, that you're infinite, that you're indestructible. In order for reality, which the, the one equals reality, this what you see now, what you think is real, is just illusion. In order for the reality to know itself, it needs what's not reality. And here you are, having a body, being at a conference, the universe, creation. It's all an illusion. It doesn't make it not relevant. Obviously, it's relevant because it's been manifested. And if there's only one being, the only one being that can manifest that is the one infinite creator. So to doubt the relevance of the illusion is to doubt the wisdom of the creator. So I'm not debating the relevance of this, but it doesn't change the fact that it is an illusion. And for a lot of people that just stays conceptual, and I wish I could just transfer you the direct experience of going beyond all experience and taking a plunge into the infinite absolute beyond creation. But just try to get a sense of it. So you imagine this infinite void it somehow develops, mysteriously so, develops a desire. Since it's infinite potential, one of the potentials is the desire to want to know itself. So it wants to know itself, but how does a void know itself? It, again, it needs something else to reference itself in relationship to, in contrast to. And so the first distortion, as Ra describes it, which you can also relabel as the first creation or the first manifestation, the first appearance, the first thing that arose, that appeared in this infinite void, this infinite unity, um, they describe as free will. I often also translate free will as awareness, pure awareness itself, because awareness is that free will. It is that capacity um, that has the capacity to generate, to choose, to create, to perceive, to know, to experience. Without awareness, without that free agency, without that free will principle, the one has no capacity to experience itself. So, from our point of view, you may as well say it's the one, because it looks so similar, because it looks like nothing, absolutely nothing. But it is the quality of knowing this. It's the quality of the capacity to choose to know, to perceive. Out of that capacity of free will, the one, the first creation being free will, the second one is love. So those first three distortions can also be seen as the three primary ingredients or primary colors of all of creation. There's literally nothing in the illusion that's not made up of the illusion of free will, love, and light. Those are the first three illusions, and really they're the only illusions. There is no other illusion. Literally everything from your traumas to your um, birth to your cup of coffee, it's all made of free will, love, and light. Those are the three primary colors that make up all of matter, all of creation, all of the densities, all of the illusions. It's just different patterns, different frequencies of awareness, love, light, or free will, love, light. So the second one is love. So imagine this infinite unity generating the capacity for knowledge, the capacity for awareness, the capacity for choice, even in a way, even though there's nothing to choose from yet at this point. But it's the capacity, it's the potential for choice choosing one thing over the other. Infinite unity cannot choose because it's one infinite unity. There's nothing to choose from. Free will is the first thing, literally, quite literally the first thing, the first manifestation, that has the capacity for knowledge, for awareness, for choice. Then what does it generate? When there's awareness in an infinite void of an infinite unity, what's the initial, what would be the, and I'm trying to translate into human description so you can get a sense of it, but if an infinite unity is suddenly filled with free agency or awareness, what would this free agency, which is infinite intelligence, what would it then, what would be the first feeling it generates? And since it's so obvious at this stage that there is only one, the initial feeling is, you could say, that of love. So love, and I'm, this is, it is definitely a distortion, the way that I'm describing it, but it's just to make it more accessible to the human mind. So, but love can be visualized 
as a formless field. That's kind of like the foundation for any form to be built on after that. It's like the cement or the wood out of which the building is made, so to speak. This field of love is, is the foundational awareness of non-separation. It's the foundational knowledge of oneness. Anything steeped in that knowledge has, you could say, a sense of love. Love is the knowledge that nothing is separate, nothing is apart. Now, we still don't have perception at this point. We don't really have any form. The one infinite creator doesn't really have anything to reflect or bounce off of. The moon cannot see itself yet in the lake because there's no lake. There's just the moon. How does the moon see itself? It can't. It needs reflective material. And voila, the intelligence, the infinite intelligence of awareness or free will, with the foundation, the inseparable, inescapable foundation of unconditional love, which is really just the knowledge of non-separation, just a deep, profound, inescapable awareness of non-separation. That's what love is. Based on that foundation of the intelligence and that love, that foundation, then the magic, in the sense of these two rubbing up against each other and seeing the need for further reflective material, it generates light. And so light is the first visible manifestation, if you will. It's still formless at this stage. It doesn't have a particular form, but it's light itself. And I'm not even talking physical light. Physical light is a tiny, 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 tiny portion of what I mean by light. Light is the ability to have perception. Light is perception. Before this, there's no perception. There's just being. There's just awareness. Awareness and being. Left could also be felt as that sense of just pure being, the purest I, the purest I am, the purest beingness. But again, there's no reflective light yet, not really. And so light is generated through this infinite intelligence. This light starts to form patterns. It starts to, over time, if you will, um, generate different patterns, different frequencies, different domains. And what it starts generating is what we can perceive of as the seven colors or the seven densities. Just like when white light is uh, shown through a prism, it will break up into these seven colors. So similarly, the, the whole palette of evolution, the whole reflective material needed for this awareness to now go on a journey on behalf of the One Infinite Creator, to know and express the One Infinite Creator in all of its potential, has begun. And so if we look at this linearly, which ultimately it's not, but from a lot of points of view it is linear, so then the first density would be that of beingness or awareness whose physical manifestation of that would be rock, for example, water, earth. And I'm not going to go too much into these because the main point that I want to get across is fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth density and kind of what they mean spiritually if you're interested. So first is beingness, again, like this. The, the, a rock just is. A rock is. It's not aware of itself. It's not having emotional processes. At least I don't, I don't believe so. I've never sensed that. Uh, not in the way we do anyway. It's alive, but it doesn't have emotional processes. It doesn't have thoughts um, in that way. So it's just being this awareness. But it is an entity. It is alive. It is the creator through awareness, through free agency, taking on incarnating as rockness. So it is alive. It's not dead. Like this dead carpet is alive. Second density would be that of growth or movement. When, as Ra describes it, for example, when the elements of, the activating elements of, say, wind and fire start to work their magic on rock and water, water starts to become lake, water starts to become ocean, water starts to become shaped, it starts to get shape, it starts to get more identity. It becomes a river, it becomes a pond, etc. Rock becomes mountain, rock becomes valley, etc. Rockness. So out of that chaos, that initial timeless chaos of those materials of first density, them working together over millions and billions of years generates form and generates specificity. This specificity can now begin to wake up to itself more and it starts to generate an instinctive desire for growth, for movement, and so we get into the second density realm. When that free agency that knows itself as rockness, for example, begins to wake up to its rockness nature, and it wants to, in a sense, begin to explore more, know the creator, because that's the initial impulse. Everything is imbued with the desire for the one to know itself. So that's the gravitational pull that the spiritual seeker taps into. It feels this calling for home, this calling for source. 
and the wanting to know itself, the wanting to know the absolute, the infinite, the one infinite creator. So it becomes plant, animal, etc. Even bacterial life. Anything that, basically anything that can move and that grows, you can classify uh, as second density incarnation. <clears throat> 